In this class, we're going to learn the two sample difference of means, Z or T test, for independent samples. So the first assumption is that the two samples are independent. Also, the samples have to be random, randomly drawn. Or, so a probabilistic sampling procedure must have taken place. The second assumption is that each of the populations that the data are drawn from are normally distributed. And third, the variables need to be measured at an interval or ratio scale. The Z or T test is quite straightforward. On the numerator, we just have the difference between the two sample means. And on the denominator, we have something called the standard error of the difference of means. And the Z or T statistic, well, that's going to depend on whether or not the sample sizes are large or small. So like we said, the choice of Z or T depends on the sample sizes, but it also depends on whether or not the population variances are known or sampled. So are we going to use known sigmas, or are we going to have standard deviations for each sample? The sample standard deviations or the population standard deviations. The formula for the standard error of the difference of means also changes based on whether or not the variances are known or unknown, so whether or not we're using population known variances, standard deviations, or sample standard deviations, and whether or not we are going to consider the variances to be pooled or separated. Pooled or separated. Let's go into more details about that. First of all, the Z or T, uh, should we use Z or T for the sampling distribution? So the general rule of thumb is to use Z if both N1 and N2, the two sample sizes, are both greater than 30. And sigma1 and sigma2 are known. The second condition for the two sigmas to be known is very rare. But of course, so long as N1 and N2 are greater than 30, even though sigma1 and sigma2 might be unknown, we can still use the z-score because technically speaking there's no real difference between a t-score with 30 degrees of freedom and a z-score. So basically the only time we're actually going to use a t-statistic is if either n1 or n2 are less than 30. So what formula should we use for the standard error of the difference of means? When sigma1 and sigma2 are known, then we can simply take an average, essentially a, an average of the two sigmas. So we have sigma1 squared over n1 and sigma2 squared over n2. If sigma1 and sigma2 are unknown, Sometimes we can assume that sigma1 and sigma2 are actually the same. We assume that the two populations have the same variance. In that case, we're going to use a pooled variance estimate, PVE. And the formula for that is right over here. Everything is, all the terms are very familiar. We're, we've just got the variances of the two samples and the sample sizes of the two samples combined in, in this way. In this case, if we are assuming a pooled variance estimate, then the sampling distribution is a T distribution with N1 plus N2 minus 2 degrees of freedom. Of course, if N1 plus N2 minus 2 turns out to be quite large, then we can actually as use a Z curve for the sampling distribution. So if N1 plus N2 minus 2 is greater than 30, we just use Z. Otherwise, we're using a T with this many degrees of freedom. The other option that we have is to assume that the two sigmas, the two population variances of the two different populations, are actually not equal to each other. In that case, we're going to apply what's called the separate variance estimate, the SVE. In here, we have the equation for the standard error of the difference of means as just S1 squared over N1 plus S squared 2 over N2 all rooted. In this case, 
we have a t distribution for the sampling distribution with whichever is smaller, n1 minus 1 or n2 minus 1 degrees of freedom. Again, if both n2, if both n1 minus 1 and n2 minus 1 are greater than 30, we can just use the z. In practical purposes, when you're answering questions about two sample difference of means, we'll always tell you whether or not to use the pooled variance estimate or the separate variance estimate. In practice, though, when you're using a computer to solve these two sample difference of means tests, we do have other tests that we can use to determine which of these two um, assumptions is more valid, a pooled variance or a separate variance estimate. The null hypothesis for a two uh, sample difference of means z test is that the two populations have the same mean, mu1 equals mu2. Keep in mind that this is the same thing as saying that the difference between the two means, mu1 minus mu2 equals 0. In the alternative hypotheses, we have three options. The first one is non-directional. mu1 doesn't equal mu2. And then we can have the two directional cases. The first mean is greater than the second mean, or the first mean is less than the second mean. And so these are the, the directional cases. This will be a right direction, and this will be a left direction. If we're dealing with the two sample difference of proportions, everything basically follows from the same uh, two, difference, uh, two sample difference of means tests. So we have the null hypothesis that the two proportions are equal, and then we have the three alternative specifications, not equal, one greater than two, or one less than two. In this case, we're going to construct our z-score as the difference of the proportions divided by the standard error of the proportions. And here we have the formula for the standard error of the proportions. The formula consists of this term p hat. So we have p hat times 1 minus p hat. And we're going to pre-compute p hat to be this amount here, which is essentially the weighted average of the two sample proportions.